Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWPlans.com on Insta, ERW underscore plans, and Etsy, ERWPlans.etsy.com. Today, I'm going to do a plan with me for May 2021. It's been a hot minute since I've done a plan with me video, and so I thought it would be really fun to get back into doing one, especially because I did get challenged. Do you ever do a plan with me video that doesn't involve like a sticker kit? So while I will be using some stickers today, this is going to be a completely kitless video. Um, I've got um, my washi tape for May here. It's, um, this is a uh, Mark's Mast washi tape. This is MT washi tape. I also have this washi tape set over here, and I will put a link to those tapes in the description. I also have my champion from the highlighter video, the uh, mild liners. And then we have a selection of stickers from Chelsea Store. Um, the top three to do, the uh, Space of Infinite Possibility covers, currently reading, upside down days of the week. This exceptionally old, you can't get it anymore. I mean, look at how old this logo is. Uh, numbering kit, to do headers, and this uh, good things that happened cover. So let's get started with our plan with me. And we're just going to chit chat today. You guys have seen me plan like I don't know everything ever and explain what I'm doing and I'll try to like explain what I'm doing while I'm doing this but for the most part we're just gonna have a chit chat today because that's the kind of mood that I'm in right now um I was psyched to do a uh, video a live video this morning for the uh passion planner launch and then that didn't happen and I kind of got bummed out about that a bit and then um, after that, I was, I had, there was drama in the Etsy shop because despite me being like, oh no, I am like a dramaless, I shouldn't say dramaless, I'm like a no drama, low drama type person. No, some people gotta go and start some shit. So it's, it's, it's been a week and I don't really want to, you know, do too much detail. So if you're looking for a how to do this plan with me, this is not the plan with me for you. I'm sorry about it. You're going to check out one of the old plan with me's where I go over everything that I'm doing, how I'm doing it and why I'm doing it today. It's just you and me. This is like if you came to a planner meetup where, that I'm at and you were like, hey, let's let's do a planner meetup. This is this is be what it was like. OK. Um, so that's that's that. So, um, I don't in real life plan upside down, just FYI. Um, I do this for the video so you guys can see what I'm doing. Cause if I didn't, um, do these upside, the top part upside down here, you'd either see the top of my head as I'm like leaning across. I've explained like a billion times before that I'm nearsighted. And even with my glasses on, it's just kind of a mess for me to, uh, see what I'm doing without it being pretty close to my face. So yeah, so I just kind of, I move things around me as I'm working on the videos for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing. In this case, I took the washi tape right up to the edge here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the scissors right along the edge of the paper and the edge of the paper acts kind of like a guide. And so I don't cut the paper. I just kind of cut the tape. Um, a little bit funkier on the curve here but I've done this often enough that I don't cut the paper I just cut the tape so, so ta -da. I know I was like oh I'm not gonna explain to you what I'm doing and here I'm explaining to you what I'm doing oh, don't listen to me I don't know what I'm talking about so anyway okay um one of the things that I do and I'll just kind of like I said I said oh I won't explain it and I'm explaining it uh, one of the things that I do is I do like to cut the washi tape. You can't see. There we go. 
See, I told you I like to keep it really close to my face. Um, cut down my washi tape a little bit below where the sticker will go. As you can see, that's what I'm doing right here. And the reason I do that is because the some of these washi tapes, and this one in particular, is are coated. Okay, just a little bit, but they have like a coating on them, and the stickers don't always stick. And so then over time, I've gone back like in my planner a year or two later, and the stickers are actively coming off the planner page because it didn't stick. So I try very hard to leave a little bit of the gray un unwashied, so to speak, so that the stickers are actually sticking to the paper as well as the washi and it just kind of binds everything together. I don't know if that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, I, 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 let me know. I'll try to explain it a little bit better in a future video, but that's kind of what we're doing right here and why we're doing it that way. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing here. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic Wednesday today. Um, I am, this is my first day, uh, if you follow me on Insta, uh, you've seen my, oh hey look it's 3am and I'm still working, or I'm just finishing working videos uh, recently. So this is my first Wednesday morning where I'm not like going cr crazy from lack of sleep because I actually got to bed at a decent hour last night, that was exciting. Um, And so I'm actually like awake enough to do this this morning. That, that was pretty fun. Um, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, again, don't follow me on Insta or whatever. Um, I've been MIA because I had to have some surgery done in my nose. It was not a nose job. Just put that rumor to bed right now. I did not have a nose job. I wish I had a nose job. I cannot afford a nose job. Um, I had some surgery done in my nose and the long story short version of it is that everything got very very backed up because of having surgery and so to try and catch up it's been a few like a, I think about a week straight of just staying up till midnight or so getting things done. Um, like I said, if you were following me on Insta, I had stories going over the weekend. I think Saturday I was up till 3 o'clock Sunday morning. Sunday is up till midnight. Monday I got the last of everything done and was up till like, God, 12, 31 a.m. Tuesday morning. So it's, it's, it's been quite some time uh, of just trying to catch up with everything that got sidelined with the surgery. And the surgery story is a very long story, and I'm going to tell it to you now because I'm just putting stickers over, like I said, partially part of the washi, part of the paper, so everything just kind of sticks together nicely. So, um, yeah, uh, last year I had COVID. I went to a conference in Las Vegas in February before we, like, really knew what COVID was and back when, like, everybody was saying, oh, it's no big deal. Not going to happen here. And, um was sick for a few months, uh, got o eventually, like three weeks, got over that. Uh, turned out I had a vitamin deficiency. They thought I was having a heart attack in April last year, about um, a little over a year ago. Turned out I had a vitamin deficiency. I went on some B12 supplements, some iron supplements, because I'd become anemic, um, which I'd never been, I'd never had a vitamin deficiency before in my life. And uh, we did that. And um, that didn't, that was just obnoxious because every time I missed a supplement for more than a day, like, I, oops, I just forgot to take it, I was back to feeling like I was having a heart attack, like my heart's racing, all my limbs are tingly, it was just awful. Uh, muscle spasms is bad, like, don't get B12 deficiency. So anyway, um, so that happened, and then I started getting sinus infections like every other month, like I had one in June. And then I had one in August, at the end of August, and it didn't clear up. And so I was on antibiotics for almost 12 weeks, at which point they were like, okay, um, yeah, the antibiotics have actually worked. Your body just thinks you have a sinus infection when you don't. So then steroid treatment started, and that made me a roid raging monster, because it was like 
crazy level steroids. So he did that. And then, so he said, crazy roid raging monster. And finally they're like, look, the only thing we can do at this point is actually reduce the bones inside your nose. Uh, they're called turbinates. They're bones, they're covered with a mucous membrane and they're covered with erectile tissue that expands and contracts based on perceived threats, like allergies, infections, that kind of thing. And um, yours have gone into overdrive. And the only thing we can do is actually re physically reduce the size of the turbinates. So we're gonna have to like reduce your bone structure. So, so that way when they swell, cause they're overreacting to things, they won't like completely block up my nose, which is what was happening. Okay, fine. But COVID was still a thing in January. And they're like, you have to at least have your, like your first shot of vaccine before we can do this. So they scheduled it for January, still hadn't been vaccinated. They rescheduled for February, still hadn't been vaccinated. So we're like, look, we're just, we don't know when this is going to happen. We just, we'll wait until you get vaccinated. But in the meantime, I get a sinus infection again. So I got a sinus infection and they're like, look, we, we don't know when this is going to go down. This may never happen. Like, like, well, I shouldn't say never happen, but like this might be a while. So I've been prescribed more steroids, more antibiotics, clear up the infection. And then all of a sudden a COVID number comes up, so to speak. Like I get this call or this email from Kaiser saying, hey, it's time to schedule your vaccine. So I schedule my vaccine. And my ENT has been keeping in touch with my GP. And as soon as it's been two weeks since my vaccine and my sinus infections cleared up, so I have no infection, I am halfway vaccinated. They are basically like, okay, it's go time. Like they put me into the, they, they took me into the hospital for a CT scan on Friday. Everything's still swollen, but there's no signs of actual infection. Um, and they found lesions, um, they called them nodules at the time were growing on this, had grown on the sinuses or had at least gotten large enough on the sinuses that they could see them on the CT scan now. So you're like, yep, yeah, it's go time, Monday you're going in. So Monday, April 5th, I went in, had to proceed my surgical procedure to shrink the bone in my nose and remove a lesion. And they told me no big deal. Like, don't worry about like work. Don't worry about catching up on things. It is an in off, it's like a, it's it's a out of pa outpatient, that's what I'm looking for. Outpatient procedure. Take a few hours, no big deal. You'll 24 hours later, you'll be back to normal. Apparently that's true for some people. It's just not true for me. Uh, there was complications during the procedure. I actually passed out and they do it like with local anesthesia while you're still awake. So you can, so they can actually watch, like they've got your nose cranked open really wide and they're sticking these needles into your nose, these bones in your nose and they're watching how much bone is shrink is being like reduced. And they're watching the nodule actually like shrink, which turned out was like a benign lesion. They're watching it shrink and it's just so disconcerting I passed out. So anyway, um, what they didn't really think about was the fact that the sinus infections and everything also seemed to be caused by my immune system being crazy overreactive. So my immune system after COVID, I'd never had an autoimmune disorder. As far as we know, I don't have an autoimmune disorder. Um, but my immune system went a little crazy and just swelled everything up. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was super terrified. I went back to the doctor cause I'm like, look, I think I've got this empty nose syndrome thing I read about on the internet. Pro tip, do not read about shit on the internet. Like I have access from my day job. Cause by the way, I'm a photographer, sticker maker, and I have a toxicology day job. Okay. Very busy person. Uh, so for my day job, I have access to all of these medical journals. And so, yeah, I was totally like, I'm an informed patient. I'm going to go read up on this. And I scared myself absolutely shitless reading about this thing called empty nose syndrome that can happen with turbinate reduction. And I was told it's like a one in a million chance and it, it, it doesn't really happen anymore with these new procedures. But one of the first signs of it is you feel like you can't breathe. And I'm just like, oh my God, I got this thing and it's going to drive me crazy. Like if you look this up on the internet, it's like 
people who get empty nose syndrome commit suicide because it's so bad. And I'm like, oh, holy crap. So I'm freaking out. They check it out and they're like, no, your body just thinks you have an infection. You don't. It's, it's fine. Everything's just really swollen from the surgery. So I had a week where I couldn't breathe and I was in pain. And so they give you painkillers and you have to do nasal irrigation two to three times a day to get all of the scabs out of your nose. And you have to keep your nose moist to prevent more scabs. And fun fact, even though it's the mountains here in Colorado, it's actually really dry. It's a semi-arid to arid area. I mean, Great Sand Dunes National Park is in Colorado, okay? It's, it's, it's dry, very dry. And we were having snowstorms because <laughs> we had snowstorms until like April 20th this year. So yeah, that was kind of fun trying to keep, like I've got a humidifier running constantly. I'd, I had a humidifier running in here right now up until a few minutes ago, you probably heard it. Um, but there's nothing I can do about that. I've got to keep like these mucus replacement swaps basically in my nose. And I don't know why I'm miming that. You can't see my face. <laughs> but um, I had to get these mucus replacement, like, moisture swabs. And so it's nasal irrigation and then na with the nasal steroid in the, in the irrigation fluid. And then in a second nasal steroid. And then these, like, mucus replacement swabs. And it's two to three times a day. And it's been, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, the good news is I have turned the corner. And, um... Well, I'm still basically fighting the climate in which I live. Um, everything's going way better now. Um, my, my nose has started creating its own mucus, which is exciting. Not too exciting because I can't blow my, I'm not allowed to blow my nose yet. I have to get finished 30 days of post-op uh, care and then go back to the ENT uh, next week on the 5th and they're gonna check and see if, like how I'm recovering, make sure everything's shrunk to the size that it should shrink now that like the post-op swelling is over. It could be another two to four weeks, they said, but generally 30 days is about right. And then I can blow my nose again, which will be really exciting. But on the other hand, I feel I can breathe again. Like the, the best part of the surgery was like immediately afterwards when my entire face is numb. Like if you've ever been to the dentist, um, it's the same kind of like Novocaine, Lidocaine thing that they inject into your, like first they numb your nose and then they put needles in your nose to inject this numbing agent. But because of the way your sinuses and your nose works, it goes down into like your jaw. So like it feels like you're about to have dental surgery. Fun fact that they don't tell you is that, you know, if you if you have sinus problems like I do, you know that your nose and your throat are connected. You get post nasal drip, you get sore throats all the time story of my life, chronic, uh, chronic strep, which this should also cure. So I'm very excited about it. Um, but what they don't tell you is that anything injected will also go down the back of your throat. So I thought I was having anaphylactic shock when they first numbed it because my throat went numb and I couldn't swallow. And they had to like pour water down my throat to clear the numbing agent so that my throat could swallow again. It was, it was, it was a trip. It was, it was, I didn't like it. So anyway, um, while I was chit-chatting, like I said, I'm just chit-chatting like if you were planning right alongside me at a planner meetup. I also put down the Space of Infinite Possibility covers, put my little to-do sign on there. Uh, what I'm going to do next is fix this side up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to start, I think I'll use some washi. And washi, the empty washi that I'm using, A, it's got this little coating on it. I'm not the biggest fan of it. But B, it's really thin. And I'll show you. As you can see here, you can just kind of see right through it. I don't know if you could see that. Let's do that again. You can see right through it because it's a little thin. So what I like to do is just take white out. This is the Tombow white out um, pen. I guess you call it a pen. I don't know. 
And I'm just going to white out any black line that I don't want showing up too much. The tiny little bit there, I'm not going to freak out about. If you have a um, really opaque white washi, you could probably you could do that as well and just layer it in it. The good thing about this is that it stays very flat. The bad thing about doing it this way, though, um, is that you have to be kind of precise because once you lay this down, this washi tape down, if you try to pull it up, it's just going to bring up everything. Like it's going to take, it's going to bring up the white, white out strip. It also can bring up some of the paper. So just make sure you know where you're laying this down before you put it down. And, oops. Just trim up the edges. It's a little, this is like a, I thought this would be like a salmon-y pink, like this is. It's a little bit orange or more orange than I thought it would be, so that's a thing. Anyway. So as you can see there from where I cut it, and I'd gone a little over with the whiteout. I don't know if you can see it, but the whiteouts come up right with the washi there. So like I said, you've got to be real precise because that whiteout will come up. Um, but it works really well. And it, unlike the like liquidy ones, it will lay really flat for you. And I can just take scissors and trim that up later. So I did that. I'm going to put down this lighter peachy pink on the bottom here. All right. I'm gonna try to get that as straight as possible. Okay, cool. That's really bright. Let's see what happens if I layer some pink over top of it. Let's just see. That's like really orange. Like I did not think it was gonna be that. Ooh. Oh, you can just test this out. What happens if we layer that? That's better. I think that's better. We'll, we'll layer it. So anyway, while I'm playing with washi tape. So yeah, that, that's been the story of my life the last almost 30 days. Uh, the fifth will be 30 days. So that, that's been the story of my life. And most people have been super kind and understanding about that. Um, I had some person say to me, it's just a little procedure. I don't see why this is such a big, you're making a big deal out of this. Because there's just some, and I, I, I prefer to have a drama free life, but apparently some people really like to be assholes. So that's fun. Um, but in general, most people have been very, very chill about the whole situation. And I am really grateful for all the people who have been very, very chilled about it. Um, there we go. That looks way better. Not too pink, but also not too peachy. So now the last thing I want to do is cover up my timeline. And I think I'm gonna actually use brown for that to kind of go with this whole like cherry blossom looking thing. Basically just recreating my own cherry blossom kit with washi tape. Um, if you use a thinner washi than this, you can see the numbers through. Um, I'm trying to use something a bit more opaque because I don't really want to use the numbers this week. Um, and I'm going to trim this up later. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my scissors here. Oh, excuse me. Mm. And just cut just to, and then I'll trim it up later. So just cut. So yeah, my voice is cutting out. Um, and that's not me being sick for once in my life. <laughs> like I've had problems with sinuses and the eustachian tubes in my ears my whole life. So this is, I'm actually really excited about what post surgery life is going to be like, but, um, yeah, this, this is because one of the things when you've been on antibiotics 
for 12 straight weeks like I was late last year. Um, you're, okay, like this, I don't know, I'm not a squicky person. If you're a squicky person, I don't know, like fast forward a couple minutes. Um, but your guts get totally wiped out. Like the back, you have bacteria, you have millions of bacteria all over your body, in your body. And your guts work because of the bacteria in them. And uh, when you've been on antibiotics as long as I was last year, your guts get kind of wiped out. So I got a probiotic. They wouldn't need, they didn't prescribe anything, by the way. They're just like, go find a probiotic. I took the pills. I didn't like the pill that they, that I found, like the supplements and stuff. So I found a liquid probiotic that's pretty good, but it tastes nasty. So the solution there is to drink it in my in a smoothie in the morning the smoothies i mean it's it's like a blueberry pomegranate or fresh blueberry fresh orange pomegranate juice smoothie and it doesn't completely cover the taste but it does a pretty good job the problem there is that um it makes my i i you know when i was in choir as a kid they used to say, don't drink dairy because it'll make you phlegmy. That's not actually true. It doesn't, drinking dairy doesn't increase mucus production, but it does just make your throat feel kind of weird. So, um, well, I'm mad at all the times that my traveling choir group went to McDonald's when I was a kid and I wasn't allowed to get a milkshake because, <laughs> or a McFlurry because you, you're singing in a couple hours. You can't be all phlegmy. Uh, since it doesn't create mucus, you know. But um, on the other hand, it just does make my throat kind of feel a little weird, not in an allergic sort of way. It just makes my throat feel a little weird. And that's what you're hearing there was the, I just had my probiotic smoothie before I got in here. And I guess what I should have done is left the yogurt out, but I had it part of the awesomeness of the smoothie is that in addition to the liquid probiotic I'm putting in there, it's also made up of really yummy um, non-fat Greek yogurt that has uh, probiotics, uh, prebiotics and probiotics in it. So it's delicious. And it adds, the, the yogurt adds more of the good stuff that I need. Um, so yeah, that's why I sound a little weird sometimes when I'm talking like just then but anyway so we're just right now i'm trimming up my washi tape Yee. um i could have used some of my own stickers to do some of these things that i'm doing with washi but honestly this year my whole goal has been to spend less money overall on planner stuff which is hard when i do videos that are review videos because nothing I do is sponsored. I don't do SponCon. Um, I don't have enough followers on YouTube, quite frankly, to do sponsored content. So, you know, um, but I'm trying not to, to buy stickers. I'm also trying not to use my own stickers because every time I use a sheet of stickers I've made for myself, that's a sheet I can't sell in my Etsy shop. And that's less money that I have in my bank account. And I really, you know, like, guess what? Uh, surprise, <laughs> uh, medical procedures aren't free. CT scans aren't free. So I, I, I need to not be broke. So I'm trying to use up, I'm like trying to plan uh, these spreads to use up the washi tape that I already have to use up the stickers I already uh, have and I have a huge number of stickers um and that's one of the things about doing like these non-kit stickers uh or non-kit spreads is that you get a you have to get really creative and so if you haven't flexed your creative muscles in a while and I haven't been able to do like some of my photography creativity and flex those muscles in a while because um essentially uh you know with covid and everything and being sick all the time i just haven't shot anything in over a year 
at this point. Um, <laughs> once I get done my recovery, I'm lining up shoots. I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm offering anybody who has purchased stickers from my shop uh, free portrait sessions if you live in the state of Colorado or if you're in a state that I will be visiting. So, by the way, that's um, Missouri in September. Um, the Jacksonville, Florida area in October. And the New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York area, which is where I'm from. I'm ori originally from the Philadelphia area of New Jersey. That's November. And December, New Orleans. Possibly Kansas in June. I don't know yet. I'm still waiting to finalize those travel plans. So if you've bought stickers from me and in the last year or so, or ever, I'll, I'll make it ever. If you've ever purchased stickers from my Etsy shop and you're in the Kansas City, Missouri area or the St. Louis, Missouri area or Jacksonville, Florida area or the South Jersey area, also New York, because I can just pop on the train. Um, or you're in uh, New Orleans. Hit me up. We can do a free photo shoot while I'm out there and I will give you my travel dates for those. I, all, I have, like I said, the Kansas City I'll be tra traveling through Kansas. So if you're in Kansas and you're between Denver, you're on the road between Denver and uh, Kansas, uh, we can talk. I'm also looking at traveling to Las Vegas in August. That's kind of up in the air at the moment. But if you're in Las Vegas in August and there's enough of you, we could do a free photo shoot. So just something to keep in mind. And I don't know where these water spots came from. We've got my timelines covered up now. I've got this covered up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start doing, I'm going to do, finish up my stickers. I'm going to sticker in my top three to do stickers. I think. I'm not sure. I don't know if I really want to use these or not. I could put it here, but it's too small. I don't know. You know what? No, I don't think I want to use these. I'm not going to use these. Mm plans changed. Put that aside. I can use that next time. Uh, I think what I will do now is just start drawing things in. I'm just going to make it a drawn in planner. So I'm going to grab some of my other tools here. Um, this is the microns. These will write on Chelsea stickers. They will also write on pretty much like anything including this coated washi tape, so that's good. So this becomes the this week's goals section. This one is super fine. I'm gonna use a slightly thicker one for this part. Let's go over my tea again. And I know you're probably like, wait a minute. You have, this is like the end of April and you're working on May 10th. Yes. And the answer is yes, yes I am. And um, I like to do my spreads a bit in advance. I would actually have done the spread for next week, but it's a sticker kit spread, so. I really hate how my handwriting's turning out on this. Like, really hate it. Let's fix that. So, fun fact. With coated washi like this, and you have to be very careful, so I'm using a Q-tip, you can take rubbing alcohol, kind of wipe it down like that, and then use the dry side to clean it up and it will remove your micron. So, 
you, you can see a little bit of it there. It's actually removed a little bit of the coating off the washi because I got a little bit scrub happy with it. But I actually don't hate how it looks like that. So I'm just going to leave it. The other thing I could have done because it's two layers of washi is ripped up the layer, the top layer of the washi and put a new layer down. That's totally a thing I could have done, but I'm not going to. So let's see here. I think I'm going to do a brown Sharpie instead. I'm going to test it out. Sure not dried out. Yeah, that works. Gorgeous. Okay. So let's try with better handwriting. Not the best, but better than it was. And then I have this new kind of cool marker um, that I'm going to do the bottom bit with. Actually, I don't think I will. I'm going to go back to my micron. My bigger micron here. And we're just going to go. Oh, that's a five. I don't want a five. And I'm going to do it like this. All right, I'm going to give that a chance to dry because I'm going to go over that with a, a marker in a minute. Down here for this part, like I said, these microns will work on Chelsea stickers. You just have to let them dry. And I'm going to make this my social media. And these are old stickers from back when I had a Sunday start. So I'm just going to go ahead and write right on over those. Like I said, these will work really well on her stickers. So I've got that done. I'll still let, give this a, like a couple more seconds to dry. While we're doing that, we're going to move on to the next part of our planning, which is actually setting up the spread itself. Um, as you may know, I like to have this section subdivided into four columns instead of two. So I've showed this before in the past, but I will show you guys again how we do this. And it's, this is a medium. And with a medium, it's about, it's just about eight and a half or eight, sorry. It's just about eight um, centimeters across with about a five centimeter block here. So I'm going to go out to four, make a mark, go to four and a half centimeters, make a mark, do the same thing a little ways down, four, make a mark, four and a half, make a mark, and then we just connect the dots, so to speak. And if you have a small or a large passion planner, it's the same process. Measure out how wide your total space is from the beginning of the uh, check mark box to the end of the space. And then div figure out how, all right, so then divide that in half, that number in half. So like it's 10, like let's say it's uh, nine centimeters. So you get to four and a half. And then let's say the little check box is six centimeters wide. So you'd make a mark at four and a half and then you'd make a mark at 5.1. And that would be where you'd start, you do your marks to connect the dots. Okay. And then we'll just go over here, do the exact same thing. make 
make sure I don't get my head in the video. But at the same time, also trying to make sure I'm getting really precise with my lines, with my dots, so that when I connect them, they're not like all wibbly wobbly timey wimey. So. So anyway, while I'm doing this, I'm just going to ask you guys, how are you feeling about the Passion Planner launch that's coming up? I can't tell you everything they're launching, but I know quite a few people have already correctly guessed the uh, new launch item that's coming on now May 4th. I know some people are very upset about the whole we're pushing it back a week. I personally think it's the best thing the Passion Planner's ever done. Um... They've had problems in the last year or so with fulfillment issues, with getting things out on time, and people have been very upset about that. The communication's been kind of lackluster. And so I'm actually really happy and excited that they are taking that feedback from their uh, customers very seriously. And... Um, I'm just real happy to see that they're like, yep, this is how we're going to do this to make sure that, you know, everything gets fulfilled and there aren't any backlog issues. That was not something they used to do. And I'm, like I said, really happy to see that they're absolutely listening to their customers on that because that was very, it's been an ongoing struggle for them, I think. Um, I have, <laughs> I have screen caps because I always bring receipts. Uh... I have screen caps going back to 2018, 2017, whatever year the Ecos came out, where they had fulfillment issues, which meant people weren't getting their orders on time and people were not happy about that. And I think it's really awesome that they're finally listening to their customers and they're finally doing what's gonna make the most people happy. Yeah, there's gonna be some people who are real, real, real unhappy that um, they're not, get, that there's not a launch, but most people I think have been pretty cool about the launch being delayed a week. I'm happy about it, like I said, because this means that orders are gonna get fulfilled, customers are gonna be overall much happier and we're not gonna have the problems we had during the winter launch. So yes, we have to wait a week. But I'm actually like really, I'd ra much, much, much rather wait a week till they got like their fulfillment shit straightened out and can just get orders out the door. I think that's, it's a really good, good idea for them. So am I a little disappointed I'm not doing a live this week to talk about the new planners? A little bit, but I'm much happier that uh, I get to say, look guys, you're going to get your orders like right after you order them. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to set up my habit tracker. And let me grab a pencil. I always, 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 like I can't say always enough, always do pencil first. This is my favorite pencil. I bought this two or three years ago. Um, always pencil first. So I'm like, I like to do... First of all, I'm big on measurements, so we're just going to like measure out. I think it's 82 gets you to the midway point here because this is 15. We'll just measure it out. That's 15. Yeah, it's that would be 16, 16.8. So it's like 84 and if you want to have like some space in between, that's like 82. So we'll measure out to 82. Make sure you guys can see me. Okay, measure out to 82. That becomes my halfway point, and I'll just go down here. These nice straight lines. You just measure from there. It's two out. So I'll measure from there again. It's two out. And then we'll go in here. There we go. You're beautiful. And then that's 82 from there. 
I like to do this connect the dots measurement. Um, I think the old saying is uh, measure twice, cut once. Um, it's, for, for me, it's like the same thing with inking anything. Measure twice, ink once. Okay, cool. So then I'm going to go in here and do my text. And I'm going to measure out my boxes for the days of the week. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And same thing down here again. You can't see because it's off the chart. So we'll do it up here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I miss one up here? I did. Four, five, six, seven. Yes, I went over one. That's fine. And I don't want to make any mistakes, so we'll just get rid of that guy. We're gonna get rid of this guy. There we go. Coolies. And so. So we've got that. Now all I have to do is draw in the black lines and we'll be good to go. Um, I think the first thing that I'm going to do though is probably do the uh, habits part. So clean off my brush here because it got a little smudgy. Smudgy is totally a word. And if you ever see like my sticker sheets and you're like, why is there so many like scribbles? It's just my, like that, my markers got smudged. Because they pick up everything. I love my Tombow markers, just if you didn't know. They just kind of smudge a little bit. So we'll just do that for now. And then and we'll do our other letters. If you're interested in this pen here, this is a really cool pen or marker. And um, I have a video coming up. It was supposed to go up next week, but with the whole passion planner thingy, happening it probably won't go up now until the uh actually the week of the 10th uh that has all of the um products and things that i am currently just obsessed with so like my favorite basically my favorite products that i discovered in 2020 um that video it looks like coming up Hopefully next week, or not wait, next week, because next week we're going to do the Passion Planner live, assuming that they have everything ready to go. And then after that, we'll do the uh, My Favorite Things video. But that's a, that is a really cool marker that I used there. Um, that Actually, it's a dual tip, just like... Um, the highlighters, just like the, the Passion Planner markers, but unlike all of those, the cool thing about that particular marker is that it's got a big squishy dot to the end of it, so um, you can actually um, make like little dots to focus uh, for the, like your little blocks here for your to-do list to make lists, um, whatever you're focusing on. Okay. Uh, for example, let me find a day that I did it. I have to go back to, yeah. These little dots here, that's uh, what the, the little squishy end of that will make. 
So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I really like that tool a lot. Um, I got it from Jet Pens, and like I said, there'll be a whole video about it coming up soon. So now I'm just going to go back over my pencil lines while I wait for all my marker ink to kind of sink in. I switched out my microns because I like to have thinner lines on the inside and slightly thicker lines on the outside. So I used an O1 for the outside and I'm using an O5 for the inside. But yeah, anyway. So actually it's funny, I was, I was mentioning that um, about having my smoothie this morning and I remembered, oh hey, I still have some of that left. So I poured myself a second glass of it and I was like, let me just take a really quick break while I'm filming this to go get myself a second glass of it. So that's this here. Uh, it's a cup of blueberries, a half an orange, a cup of pomegranate juice, and half a cup of Greek yogurt, and um, a tablespoon, I think it's a tablespoon, of uh, probiotic juice. Or prebiotic. I think it's prebiotic and I take the probiotic pill. The prebiotic I got from, um, it's called Beauty Chef. They have it at Sephora because it's supposed to be good for your skin. I have no idea if it actually does anything for your skin. I hope it does because with all the steroids, my I look like a freaking 12-year-old uh, boy with all of the breakouts and spots and things on my skin right now. Actually, I think I'm a little, sorry guys, took that off the screen there. I'm actually a little grateful that Passion Planner uh, delayed their launch because it'll give me a chance to like clean my skin up before I do a live next Tuesday because, oh my gosh, like seriously. And I have been, I have always had oily skin and I've got treatments for it. But legitimately, Oily skin acne is very different than uh, roid raging steroid acne. Um, it's just these things are huge. These these spots or zits or acne or whatever you call them, pimples, uh, they're huge. They are just absolutely massive and cleaning your skin doesn't really treat them. Uh, I have the... Uh, peace out acne dots that I use on my face twice a day um, because I mean I have to wear a mask outside and no one's coming inside so I just wear them for you know like eight hours during the day usually whenever I have to be like at my desk where I'm going to be like putting my hand on my face often so I'm trying to keep it clean so I have them on there and then of course at night and all it's really done is made them slightly less bumpy. Like they're not as elevated as they were before, but otherwise, like legitimately, it my face is just a red pizza right now. Just, it's bad. And um, uh, steroids, man, steroids. But we have to keep, the, it's for the healing process, apparently. I'm not a doctor, I don't know. But uh, I tried switching up my uh, face washes, things like that, and it's still just, it's, because it's not about having like dirty skin at this point. It's about my hormones being absolutely out of whack and just producing more sebum than I could possibly ever control with the um, product that I have available to me. And so, you know, there's just, we're just not gonna get to a place where my skin's cleaned up. So um, the thing about this uh, probiotic stuff, it's in my smoothies, in my prebiotic stuff, is that it's also supposed to help balance out the hormones that are causing this. We'll see. I'm not a big believer in a this kind of supplement thing. Um, I, I totally suggest watching, or watching, listening to the Dream Podcast. Um, and you can get all the information about why the supplements business is kind of crap. But since I started using that combined with just a regular prebiotic pill that you get from like Whole Foods, like it's a generic Whole Foods brand prebiotic pill. Um, or a 
ever since I did that, I combined that with the liquid prebiotic, uh, sorry, probiotic, prebiotic um, from Beauty Chef. Like my gut got really uh, well reestablished. My gut bacteria kind of came back and um, I actually got off the supplements, the B12 and the iron supplements. I'm no longer anemic because I've got the correct, I shouldn't say correct, I've got the good gut flora back now. So that means I can absorb these vitamins that I wasn't absorbing from my food. And most healthy people, this is one of those things that they do cover on that The Dream Podcast. Most healthy people don't need vitamin supplements. You get all of your nutrients from your food just fine. Um, it's people, like I had to, my doctor, someone was like, I know you need to get supplements. You're very sick. Um, but yeah, most people, you can just get everything you need from what you're, the food you eat. So, um, I was a bit, you know, like skeptical of these things, but it really seems to be helping. So we will see how it helps with the skin issue now that I've switched up to one that has some extra ingredients in it to supposedly help the skin, especially skin under stress. And roid raging skin is definitely skin under stress. Let's just be honest about it here. So anyway, there we go. My habit tracker is done and all cleaned up from my erasing. And I've got this done. Um, so that's basically the spread for the week. The what we're going to do now is just kind of I'll show you how one day will look filled in or one day its column will look filled in and you can kind of like extrapolate from there how you would do the rest of the week yourself. Um, just got my little Tombow marker here. Just go across the top here. Because as you can see, I don't have the times anymore. So that will become the appointment section. And I think I want a darker brown marker for this. I'll get my other, my old stickers out here. I have so many sticker binders, it's it's actually kind of ridiculous. Uh, beautiful. So this will go on the top in the today's focus section so I can track my steps every day. Spatula tool for fiddly bits. I was going to do a brown marker, but I think because I don't want to really mess around trying to find one, I'll just go ahead and use black here. Go back to the 01. This will be appointments. And I will leave that empty. And then as I have any kind of appointments come in, I can do that. Um, let's see what else. do my top three to do. So I'll leave some spaces here for my appointments. I will go down to about where, I think it's about nine o'clock here. Let's make it, yeah, nine o'clock I think is good. Just go across again. And this becomes, Actually, let me get my little stampy marker out and you can see how cool this thing is. One, two, three. Ta-da. Top three to-do section. And 
then we'll put in a meal tracker. I think that's a good one. I usually need snacks, so I'll leave the snacks out. And then we'll do a before bed section. And basically then I just go ahead and fill those out for the rest of the week. All right, so once I've got all of that set up and I'm pretty happy with it, I can go in and I can start setting up my um, appointments in the appointment section. Um, so I'll just go ahead and add some of those right now off my phone. Um, this is the point where I'm like, which you know marker do I wanna use? So let's see, the 11th. on here oh, that's good so as of right now because it's you know a little bit in advance um, I only have one thing to put in my appointments what I would do at the point that this week was over is take all of my tasks from this week and I would um, anything that wasn't done gets transposed into this week and then on Monday I start with the top three tasks from here I would plan out my social media, um, which I do using a social media calendar that has like first all my like fun holidays. And then we go into uh, other stuff, um, promotions, that sort of thing. And I would map out my goals. The final thing I'll do is something with this space over here. I usually reserve this half of the space of infinite possibility for whatever the um, weekly challenge is over here. Um, this week is, or for the week of May 10th in this planner, is to find beauty in the mundane. So what I'm gonna do is reserve this area for a photo of the week that relates to that. Um, my intacts and my, uh, what do you call that? My, um, sprocket both print at like business card size so I think I might actually not have enough room for that um because I think that's two and a half by three but we're inches so we might just barely make it unless I do on an angle but then I'm not going to have the width so let's see here if we do two and a half from like here to here oh my gosh inches seem so huge to here yeah that's gonna be way too wide let's see let's find out if it actually is hold on two and a 
two by three. Beautiful. I can fit two by three on here. So here's how we'll do this. We will go, okay. I'm going to do 82 from the end of the page. Just give it a little space. Get about two millimeter space here and about two millimeter space from the bottom here. These lines I'm going to do very lightly because these aren't going to be like forever lines. From there, three inches. Let's go over. Let's see, that's three, and this total width here is from there to let's say two in from the edge of the page. One, two, about eighty-one. So that's forty and a half is the center. There's this whole method to my madness here. So three, that's one and a half. So there's those lines. And just line it up. real light lines and then we're going to do two inches from let's say let's do two and a quarter from the edge of the page two one. come over here do the page two and one and then I will call this my beauty in see the beauty in the mundane so we'll do and we'll do one the word mundane over here Sometimes I can freehand my lettering all right, just not always. And then I'm going to grab my brown. Oh, wrong side there. And then I'm just going to take this little light, light gray. And there's really kind of no reason to be super like specific because this is going to be picked close, you know, photo goes here and that's why I'm going to write down here. Yeah. 
and it actually does kind of bother me that it's not totally straight over here so I'm just gonna straighten that up a bit just trying to go for like a it doesn't have to be perfect but you know it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to not be not perfect I guess you could say there we go and then I can go ahead and get rid of my guidelines here and I know I have said before don't do the scribbly thing and I just did the scribbly thing but I'll go over it again just when you're erasing as one does try to go in the same direction it may look like I'm going back and forth but I'm actually picking it up off the paper and going back and that'll keep your paper from ripping just keep going the same direction usually from the binding outward or from the center down if you're doing horizontal so then if I was racing something up here I'd kind of go like that here we go and now I can do I'm doing a photo a day project on my finsta as the kids say um, which is E Williamsburg uh, so you can see there I'm just doing like photos of random things I find on my walks and I will take that photo put that there and that will serve as my challenge for the week which I will highlight over here and that will be my setup for May 10th through May 16th Thanks again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please share, and please leave a comment letting me know what videos you'd like to see in the future. The videos go up every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. However, sometimes life gets in the way, so if you'd like to be notified on days when the videos may be a little late going up or when we have a live event, such as the Passion Planner release next week, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, all, like I said before, none of this is um, sponsored content. Everything comes out of pocket. So if you enjoyed the videos and you want to see more planner reviews, more plan creative plan with me's and more product um, suggestions and tests and honest reviews, then please become a patron. It's patreon.com slash ERW plans when you become a patron that helps support keeping these videos going. Um, until next week, thank you guys so much for watching and stick around for the next video.